So good afternoon, Linda McAvan. Uh, thanks a lot for accepting this interview with Plan International. Um, a series, I mean, there have been many recent agreements and action plans that have been sort of endorsed uh, over the last month, starting you know, with gender equality and the recent gender action plan, but also human rights and the human rights and democracy um, uh, action plan. And last but certainly not least, the new sustainable development goals that we also know now as the Agenda 2030. And I will come back to the SDGs uh, after. But first of all, I'd like to start with the Gender Action Plan. And I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts on this Gender Action Plan. I mean, it's a very ambitious and complete document. But we want it more than a document. I mean, it's good to have paper, but we want it to see implemented. So how do you think the EU can now start implementing this, uh, this gender action plan and ensure that the flaws of the previous action plan don't get repeated this time? Well, I mean, we've had gender action plans before. And if you ask people, should we do something for women and girls, they all say yes. Yeah. But the problem is on the ground, it doesn't always happen. And when we had the evaluation of the previous programme, what we found was the way, because EU money, of course, the, the people in Brussels, the Commission, the Parliament and the Ministers are deciding on the big programmes. But then the money goes to delegations. It goes to offices in each country, in developing countries. And they are the ones who decide which projects to fund on the ground. And we often find in some of those delegations, people know they should do something on gender. So they kind of do one or two projects, think, oh, that box is ticked. They sign um, a civil servant to that. But it's often somebody who's new. Mm -hmm. And the people at the very top of the organisation have not taken on board gender. So we've had some good projects, some important projects, but we haven't had the issue of, of, of gender right through the whole work of the delegation. So that, for example, when somebody meets the Prime Minister of, of a country and they're talking about cooperation between the EU and that country. The gender item is not on the table. We're not saying, what about the women? What's happening with your project? And that's what has to change. We don't want our gender action plan to be a tick box exercise, something left to, you know, uh, something to, oh yes, and the gender at the end. It has to be something which is integral to the whole work of the EU in development policy. That's what I hope will change this time. And what specific role do you see for the European Parliament and the David Committee to make sure that the different actors uh, that have a role to play in gender equality actually implement this action plan? Well, there, we as MEPs, we're responsible for two things mainly. We're the budget of the EU on development, with this, together with ministers, and then the scrutiny of the programmes to make sure they actually happen. And there we rely on people like Plan International. We, we need to work with NGOs. You're the people out on the ground delivering the programmes. And we need to hear from you what's happening. When we talked about the new gender action plan, I asked the commission officials who were drafting it, how would a woman or a girl know that this, there's been a change? How would somebody sitting in Mali, a woman sitting in Mali, in Kenya, in DRC Congo, how would they know something has changed? Will their lives get better? And that's the work you do on the grounds, and that's what we should be thinking. We should be looking at some measures of where we are now and we should be monitoring that over the years to come. And the SDGs might help there, but that we're going to talk about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you're right, and actually this is what something that Plan International is currently doing, is starting to disseminate information on this new, new gender action plan towards our staff, but also local partners, and see how they can interact with, with EU delegations. So I think this is, civil society has an important role to yeah, play absolutely. in this. Yeah. So. People on the front line, mm. the women and the girls in developing countries, um, they're the people who should be able to tell us if they're feeling the difference, if they're feeling any change. And, uh, Let's hope they will feel some changes. Now onto the um, Sustainable Development Goals, or the so-called Agenda 2030. Again, it is a very ambitious and also for the first time universal uh, framework which covers all four areas of sustainable development, economic, social, environmental and governance. Um, what do you think we most need to change to move away from business as usual in the EU and really move towards a more transformative approach uh, to achieve these goals, but achieve these goals especially what, in terms of what concerns plan the most marginalised and girls and women in particular? 
Well, of course, the message from um, the SDGs, the aim is to leave nobody behind. And, um, and that's all in society. So I think the good things about the Sustainable Development Goals is they're comprehensive. They cover every, the 17 goals, 169 targets, and they cover many different aspects, including governance. And they also cover not just developing countries, but all countries. Belgium, Belgium should have an SDG plan, Germany, Britain, France. So in that sense, it's good. Um, the change there should be, um, for example, some of the problems we have in the world are very are common to all. We have to tackle climate change. Um, you know, I've seen my first ever real visit to Africa was one many years ago where we talked about climate change and I met young women whose lives had been transformed because of climate change because their fathers were asking, they had a bride price they were pastoralists living in northern Kenya and when they were got to get married their fathers received a bride price in cows for their hand in marriage and because of climate change, because of the cows dying and the problems of drought, the girls were being married younger and younger and younger. So you cannot tackle poverty and it made it close, it kind of the first time made a link to me that actually things affect people more in a different way than you imagine sometimes. So, the Syrian refugee crisis, I was in Turkey, and one of the biggest issues inside refugee camps is young Syrian girls being married very, very young because their parents feel they cannot take responsibility for them anymore. So, you know, one policy affects another, so we have to sort out the refugee crisis. We have to sort out problems of tax issues. If companies don't pay their taxes in Europe or in developing countries, and we have illicit financial flows, and governments cannot collect tax revenue, we can't fund decent public services. And decent public services, it's women who often are the ones who use public services more, and the problem of footloose capital and unregulated tax, tax problems and havens, actually, we can't, it's not like the Millennium Development Goals, you can't do it just with the developing countries. You need the whole world to work together on a common agenda. And that's what the SDGs offers us, that every country should identify the common problems and work on them together. And one of my next questions is actually on policy coherence for sustainable development. So we will, we will come back to that. Because indeed, Agenda 2030, I think is supposed to be an example of creating those linkages and synergies among the... I mean, we have 17 goals, which is huge but we don't want to repeat the mistakes of the MDGs where there was a lot of silos. So we really want to make sure there are linkages and synergies among the different dimensions of the new sustainable development goals. And Vice President Timmermans, I think, was very clear in New York in saying that the commission will really work hard to avoid those silos in its, um, in its modus operandi. But of course, it's not only for the Commission uh, to work, you know, to work in more in more synergy. So, what will the European Parliament do, and what could your role be in uh, in ensuring that other committees, first of all, take the agenda seriously, and in the second time, you know, once they take the agenda seriously, make sure that they work. There is collaboration among the different committees to get this policy coherence for development. Well, the first issue, the first thing we have to get right, are the indicators. Um, so we had the agreement in New York, everyone's gone away happy, big fanfare, but now we have to make it happen. So there's a committee of experts who will produce the indicators between now and March, and they will present them. And indicators have been done by statisticians, but of course they're very controversial. How do you measure inequality? How do you measure governance in a country? I presume some of the governance goals should mention gender as part of those goals. So we should be looking at the indicators and seeing which ones are gender relevant and are they actually, is the gender issue there? We have been pushing as um, MEPs for disaggregated data. So that, that, that information is collected on women. You cannot monitor progress unless we know whether the number of people in employment are women, the number of women, people educated are women. Again, on, a, on my first ever trips to Africa, we talked about primary school education. We visited a school. By the beginning of the five years old, lots of children, girls and boys. Age 11, two girls left. This is very common in many countries. So data matters, data collection, all that issues, and that's something we have to get right in the next few months, and we'll be working on that. The second thing is, you're right, we have um, sustainability 
climate change, they're dealt with across different committees. In every government in, in the world, you have different government departments. We have to get those government departments working together. It's, we in the parliament, we've already had joint committees with um, our environment colleagues, and that's what we're going to do again. And the commission is going to produce a um, outline proposal on implementation of the SDGs either before Christmas or early next year. And we want to create a kind of monitoring mechanism for the next few years. Obviously, we have to give all the work has to start, the statistics, the technical work. But after that, it will be a monitoring, pushing, finding, aligning our policies with the new agenda, seeing if they make sense. And the European Commission has said it will look again at the European Consensus on Development mm -hmm. to see if it's still an appropriate instrument for the new 2030 agenda. And do you feel that within the Parliament there is buy-in from the different committees, the non-usual suspects who work less on those issues, to really mm -hmm. start collaborating better? Um, not as much as I would like. There's, we, we had a debate a couple of weeks ago on climate change and colleagues there were aware um, it was good that we had heads of state in New York, uh, President Hollande was there, and President Hollande, of course, will be hosting the Paris Climate Summit. Um, but a number of prime ministers, mine included, talked about the SDGs as if they're just more MDGs. I didn't get the impression that there's a UK government plan for SDGs. I think there's a sort of plan for the development side. So I think there's a lot more to be done, and that's what worries me about the SDGs, it was quite easy to get agreement in the end on the common text at the United Nations and that's not normally the case. Normally it takes a lot of time to negotiate and then there's wrangling at the end about the words. This was all agreed. But what makes me worry then is if they agreed it so easily, is it because they don't intend to implement it or is it that countries will say, oh the 17 goals, 169 targets, I'll do those ones. Mm. We want every country to do all the goals. We don't want, you know, oil-rich countries to say, yeah, we've done these ones, but we haven't done the gender ones. Or we don't want countries, rich countries, to say, yeah, we've got high GDP and everyone in education, but we've got growing inequality, and that doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, if you want to create a better world, you have to hit all the buttons, and uh, that's the challenge, really. The monitoring will be very important as well. To monitoring, I and mean, we need the public to push. There isn't a lot of public awareness at the moment. Um, I think we can't exaggerate, there wasn't massive public awareness, particularly at the start of the, S of the MDG process. But we have to build that support so people understand what their Prime Minister's promised and what should happen. I keep saying to everybody, please have a look at what your Prime Minister said in New York and then hold that government to account. But governments will come and go between now yeah. and 2030, so that's the other problem. And then coming back to the importance of gender equality, we know how gender equality is crucial to sustainable development. How um, will you be working with the FEM committee to mainstream gender equality uh, across all the different committees and the, the work that you'll be doing at the level of the European Parliament? Well, the development committee is, of course, responsible for development policy. And the FEM committee is responsible for gender policy within the EU. So what we want is for the FAM committee to look at the SDGs and see which ones are relevant to its work. It's not that the development committee will, do, will start working on whether women have got equal pay inside the EU. That's not our, our remit. The main, remit. the main point is that the FAM committee, the women's committee, should be looking at the SDGs. Every, the committees should be saying, how do the SDGs apply to us? The European Commission will come forward with a proposal and then in Parliament we need to each committee should look at the and see how they are going to implement them and that's where we should be looking. I don't think that that coordination is happening at the moment. And will you be leading on that to sort of follow up on... Very difficult in part who leads on what, you know, the, if you, people on the environment committee will feel very strongly, they lead on environment and, um, and in a way we, sh we don't want to make it the lead DEVE committee because it's not a development issue. It's true. If we're trying to break out of the MDG silo, right. then we really should be saying, actually, this is a joint responsibility mm. and it's the environment committee to work on the inside on the sustainability criteria. Um, and but the Commissioner Timmermans, we've been talking to him and he's promised to come up with this paper. We've talked about joint meetings of the relevant committees, but we've a long way to go. I mean, inside, I mean, I meet a lot of NGOs, I meet a lot of people on the ground, 
many of them are not mentioning SDGs to me. Mm. It's and not, it's not, never, it's, and in a way, you know, we have to say, these are processes. What matters really is we get the policy changes. So we should be clear about that as well. And do you already have some sort of strategy or plan on your, how you will hold EU to account on how they implement the SDGs? Have you talked about it already? Within? We've talked about it, but we are at the very start of the process. You know, it's only three weeks since, since New York. Um, the Commission will come up with proposals. We haven't, the Parliament is still working up a sort of, because we have to get it right. The main thing is not to rush in and say, let's write another report. Frankly, that, that, that will actually work because we not, you're not even going to start implementing the SDGs in that sense until True. one, two years away. I think the first thing is this, focus on getting the right statistics, getting the right data collection. And then we can, after that, we could set up, a, in my view, a, a kind of maybe once a year we have a review. But we, we haven't d decided as a committee yet. We're still thinking about it mm -hmm. because we're taking soundings from people like yourselves. Yes. And we want, you know, your help. How do you think it could work? Mm -hmm. We don't have a fixed view. How, how can we make sure that people beyond NGOs in development and some green lobbies know what, what this is about? Yeah, I think it's new for everyone and yeah. there's a lot of thinking to be made and joint yeah. reflection to see how we can all work yeah. uh, or work together. And this, this brings me to my last point of participation. Um, I think there's been a lot of participatory work uh, towards the post-2015 framework. In yeah. building this framework, civil society has been involved, but also mm. you know, young women, girls. Uh, there's been a lot of mm. uh, participatory spirit in the, in the making of the framework. But we want to make sure it doesn't stop there. Now, we, as you said, everything still needs to be done. We need to go to the implementation phase. There will be the monitoring. How can we make sure, especially, of course, here in what concerns us the EU level, how can we make sure that young voices, but especially also girls and, and women, um, get their voices heard on the changes, hopefully positive changes they feel once we start implementing the SDGs? What do you, we think, what do you think we can do at the EU level to make their voices heard? I mean, we have had some, there been some projects to give young people a voice. But of course, you're only reaching very few people. They're good projects. And we had some young people in New York from the One Campaign and from Save the Children. We met them and um, they were able to speak for, from different countries. Um, again, a lot of the work has, has happened much more locally. It's not about bringing handfuls of people to Brussels to have their voices. So I think it's useful to bring voices to be heard here but the real work will have to go on on the ground and again it's I and mean, that will depend on the countries each country will be very different and I don't so even working know. also with EU delegations I yeah I with EU delegations um, I, um, I it's um, and what's you know some countries have stronger NGO se civil society organizations sectors than others in some countries there are very few civil society organizations and again, we'll have to rely a lot on people on the front line. And so people like yourselves are working to find out. Um, and also to come to us with practical problems. I don't want to get hooked up on a kind of process issue. I don't want to create another big process where we tick boxes and we spend a lot of time filling in questionnaires. What we really need to know is, are there, what are there, are there any real problems on the ground to get projects designed to meet the needs of, of women on the ground happening? And if there, are, if there are issues, then we need to know what they are. Are the issues of, you know, are the issues of cooperation being taken seriously? Um, so I think I think there's some thought to go into that as well, really, in the agenda. We've done, we've got a new agenda action plan. It won't start till next year, so we've got time to think about it. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll manage to link up the good work on the agenda action plan with the SDGs and the goals yeah. that are relevant, linked to. To gender yeah. and uh, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing to take which the relevant SDGs, build them into gender action plan. How do they fit together? You need a kind of implementation plan mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, well, a lot of positive things ahead, and uh, we just need now to think about how we can make it work. And I think work together, civil society, European Parliament, yeah. the Commission, member states. I think now we need to see to get our act together and uh, get started. Absolutely. Yeah. We've had the European Year of Development this year, 2015. Yes. A, lot of, a lot of new things started. Um, the last 
Um, the climate summit in Paris is the next, the last kind of jigsaw puzzle mm. of 2015. But it's only the beginning of the process, mm -hmm. it's not the end. Yes. And we have to start making sure that it works because if you want, at the moment, you know, lots of problems in the world. You know, there are lots of issues in the world. And at the end of the day, we need to, to work together to make the world a better place for people to live in. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the challenge, really. Yeah. Big challenge, but um. <laughs> yeah, that's the challenge. Thanks a lot, Linda McAvan, for joining us and for answering my questions. Okay. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.